because you want to raise us up to a high level. You want to use our life mightily. You want to bless our whole life. So we, whenever we look at anything we have, we say, God, you are so very, very wonderful. Okay, and then Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, that while we were sinners, that means before we uh, began to know Jesus or to believe in Jesus, before we knew Jesus, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us already. God already has a plan to save us, to give us eternal life. So the, uh, now why the examples of people who don't appreciate God because they don't see the sin and they don't see the blessings of God. They don't see the love of God and so they don't, they don't appreciate God. And God's nature is He he's, has ability to plan, to plan the salvation for us. And He has love that He really loves us. He, he treasures us. He wants to do something to give us eternal life. He wants to accomplish salvation. He wants to give us the best. And He accomplished that, that while we were sinners, before we start to love Him, God already loves us for eternity. Now, I have a saying that God gave me, that God loves me one-sidedly. Only, you know, before we knew Him, we did not know how to love Him. He loves us one-sidedly for eternity. So before we knew Him, He already loves us. Now, some of you might have this experience. Someone really loves you, likes you. Before you know that, the person likes you. Before you like the person, the person already likes you and loves you. Now, some people have this experience that this person that have a, you know, a secret love for Him. And God has a secret love for us. Before we were created before we knew Him. God already has His secret love for us. So this is His grace, His love. And He planned Jesus Christ, sent, to, sent Jesus Christ to the world to die for us, to give us eternal life. And that is a wonderful blessing, that God is so full of blessings. God is so wonderful. God is so good that nobody is willing to give us uh, you know, even a house. Nobody is willing to give us a house. And nobody is willing to give us His Son. And nobody is willing to give us His life. But Jesus gave us His life. And God the Father gave us His Son. So all this we can see, God is full of blessings. God is full of grace. God is so very, very wonderful. So that is the grace of God. So we want to final points we you know we pray to God to ask God to guide us to understand the points in the message to talk about the grace of God that he knew us ahead of time he loved us before we uh, knew him before we loved him and he loved us while we were sinners while we were not lovely at all because sinners are not lovely and he already you know he God Jesus is willing to give up His life to die for us. And He draw us to Him to give us eternal life. And He would, would move in our heart. He would move in our heart to draw us to believe in Jesus. Even when people reject Him, He still continues to move our heart to follow Him. Okay? So why do people reject Christ? Because people are self-centered. They don't think that God is full of love. They, they thought the problem in the world came from God. Actually, the problems in the world came from s sin because sin separates us from God. Therefore, we have suffering. And then, uh, also men are self-centered. Uh, even when they knew God, when we know God, we still many times sin because we did not realize the whole, the perfect love of God, the depth and the heights of God's love, that His love is beyond our imagination, is far beyond our imagination, is perfect, perfect love, that because people didn't realize that. And that's why people search for love in the world, 
but they are disappointed. And the warning is that the warning is that when we don't have God's love, then people suffer. People uh, they try to find love from other things. Many people try to find love in sex, but they just want sex and then they don't find love. And because people don't have perfect love, so that's why many people are disappointed. And then how we can appreciate Jesus dying for us while we were sinners, then we think of if we were to go to hell and spend eternity in hell, how terrible that would be. And now we have heaven, and now we have God's wonderful plan in our life that all our lives we can experience God's goodness. God blesses us in every way. The Holy Spirit works in our heart to draw us to Him. He does so many wonderful things. So we say, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You give us Jesus Christ and give us all things with Him. And Jesus is willing to die for us and give us all things. So when we count all the blessings, we say, Lord, help me to repent of my self-centeredness, that we are centered in ourselves and we don't appreciate God's love. And then when we appreciate God's love, we experience His love more. We experience His joy more. And we experience His blessings more. So when we understand the great love of God before we even knew Him. Even before we were born, we will say, God, if you love me before I was born, for sure you'll continue to love me now. For sure you'll continue to bless me now so I can trust in God and relax in God. Okay? So I hope that this will help us to appreciate the great love of God. Okay, and then when a sinner repents, likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So even one sinner repents, the whole heaven rejoices over him. Now, many people didn't realize how important it is for us to repent, and so they stay in sin. That's why people, examples of people who don't repent, or people who didn't realize that God is happy when they repent. And then many people just say, I'm not good enough. I still have many sins. And they think that they cannot come to God. But any moment we trust in God and repent of our sin, God is very happy. For sure we can come to Him. Okay, God's nature. God's nature is He is a God of joy. Heaven is full of joy. And... God he is full of love. He loves us so much. He wants us to repent so we can receive the blessings of God. So God is full of goodness and love for us. He wants to give us His, His love. So whenever one person turns to Him, He is very, very happy. He jumps. He dances. He shouts in joy when He sees one person repent and trust in Jesus as his Savior, then God is very, very happy. So he is a joyful God. He loves us and he works in our heart. Now that is grace. He works in our heart to bring repentance uh, so that we'll repent. He works in our heart so that we'll trust in Jesus. We'll come to God. And also he wants to put the joy in our lives too. For those who have faith in God, they can have the joy of the Lord. When they repent and thank God and they know that God is very happy, that will give us joy. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! God forgives me. Whenever I repent, God is very, very happy. So we can rejoice and we can enjoy life. So God gives us His joy and changes us so that we'll continue to repent and turn away from sin because sins are very, very destructive. Okay, now... Uh, why don't people repent? Or they don't see that repentance will bring joy to heaven and to themselves. Because people think that there is fun in sins. Because people enjoy having you know, premarital sex or extramarital sex so that they think that that is fun. But actually that is destroying their life. 
it will bring guilt to them and bring destruction to their life because people don't see that sins are destructive therefore they um, they will continue to sin and don't repent okay and then the warning if people don't repent they cannot go to heaven if people don't repent and trust in Jesus as the Savior they will have they will go to hell and that is a terrible place to go to okay so how how can we have repentance when we realize God is such a good God he has so many blessings he is the perfect father there is no father like him in on earth all the fathers are imperfect on earth but God is the perfect father he loves us so much he is willing to send his son to die for us so he he will rejoice over us so when we see that he's such a wonderful God and our lives the whole life will go to a higher higher level then we'll say God you are so very wonderful when we have you we have a perfect life we thank God so when we see the goodness of God and we see how terrible sins are because sins destroy the relationship between people and destroy relationship between people and God so we see the destructiveness of sin and then we say Lord the only way is for me to repent and turn to God and then God is very very happy and God will bless us and then we can enjoy God so I hope that we all will say God I appreciate you I like you I enjoy you and and I know that when I repent to you you are very happy you will be for sure the whole heaven will rejoice and my life will start to go in the right direction when I repent so we rejoice when we repent of our sins okay so I hope that you see that when we see the goodness of God when we see the grace of God the wonderful nature of God when we see all these things and then we and then we see a lot of beauty of God in many Bible verses we can see the beauty of God in every area and then we'll say it's so wonderful to be a Christian it's so wonderful that we have all these blessings and then we'll be motivated to love God and follow God all the days of our life okay now Romans 8.32 another verse he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things so God did not spare his own son Jesus Christ but delivered him up for us all that he delivered Jesus for us all to be crucified on the cross to be humiliated by people and and whipped by the people and then uh, mocked by the people and crucified by the people that he gave us his son if he gave us his precious son how shall he not with him also freely give us all things then he'll give us all the blessings so if he has given us Jesus Christ his beloved son he'll also give us all things now here are pictures like so this uh, represents the hands of God that the blessings are coming down he gave us Jesus Christ he gave us the sun and the rain and then he gave us beautiful nature he gave us birds and animals and health and nature and give us uh, here is um, I cannot see that clearly uh, that the things in the world all the good things in the world okay and then the church the church is okay the church that he we have pastors and and other Christians to give us love and care and help each other it's a wonderful things you know God give us all things and and also God give us spiritual gifts God give us joy and strength and provision and God give us all things of different areas so that our life will be abundant that we can follow God and love God and our whole life will be blessed by God so he did not spare his son and he gave us all things okay so God is so wonderful so uh, examples negative examples and positive examples 
that many people didn't see Jesus as a wonderful gift. Even some Christians, they don't really appreciate the gift of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. And they didn't realize salvation is so beautiful and so wonderful. And also they don't appreciate all the things God has given us. When we take anything from God, we should thank God. Like when we drink water. We thank God. Water is so wonderful. You know, God created water. It's good to drink. It lubricates our body. It gives us everything we need. Now, if water is like, if, if it's like the, uh, the water in the gutter, the dirty water. If water is dirty, you know, all the water in the world is dirty, is black, we still would drink it. If, if water is like uh, the petroleum oil, we still would drink it uh, because we need to live. But God makes the water so clear and it lubricates it's, you know, what we need. So we say, wow, God give us all things and the spiritual gifts and the provision, everything we need, God gives to us. So we say, thank God, thank God for all the wonderful things you have given us. So, so God's, uh, but many people don't appreciate. That's why they're negative examples. And then uh, God's nature, God's nature is He's a God of love. He's a God of giving. He's a generous God. He gave us Jesus Christ and He also gave us all things. He created all things for us. So we are special in His plan. And He has planned to give us different things. When we love, it, love Jesus and follow Him, then in our whole life we'll see blessings coming to us from time to time. He'll continue to bless us. So, um, He has a wonderful plan to work in our life, to bless our life, so that our whole life will go higher and higher. So I hope that we all say, God, you're so wonderful. You have a wonderful plan to give us all these free gifts, everything in the world. It's so beautiful, so wonderful. And, it, and the Holy Spirit gives us strength and spiritual gifts so that we can serve God. And then He remembers all our good works and He will reward us. Okay, now why don't people appreciate God? Because people, they just want more things. They want more things. They don't see God as the source of all goodness. They just want the things God created and they don't want God. And then the warning. When people don't have Jesus Christ, they don't have eternal life. And then when they don't have Jesus Christ, they will suffer in the world. Even though they might have money, but they will suffer in many ways because they are not blessed by God. They don't have the joy of the Lord. They don't have the strength of the Lord. They don't have the peace of the Lord. But when we have Jesus Christ and trust in Him, we'll have peace and joy and love to enjoy everything we have. And we'll experience all the gifts of God so that our life will go higher and higher. Okay, how? How can we appreciate all the good things of God and how we can really receive Jesus as our wonderful Savior. First, we see that we are all wretched sinners. We only deserve hell. But Jesus died for us so that we can have eternal life. That is a wonderful gift that Jesus took away all our sins and He covered us with the robe of righteousness. That He puts His righteousness on us so that in the sight of God, we are like Jesus Christ. That is in Isaiah 61.10 That we'll rejoice in Him because He has given us the robe of salvation, the robe of, of uh, uh, righteousness that will be like the bride and the bridegroom. So beautiful. That is in Isaiah 61.10 So we see that the wonderful blessings of God and then uh, He gives us all things. He gives us our spiritual life. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us the joy and the strength and uh, all the good things of God and the spiritual gifts and opportunity to serve God and rewards on earth and in heaven. And uh, we, He gives us also Christians, other Christians to be with us, to bless each other. He gives us opportunity to, to change other people, to help other people so that the whole life is changed so that we can see people change. 
so that we can see people's lives change. When we see people's lives change, is happy. So, um, so this is how that we appreciate every gift of God, everything God gives us. We appreciate that and we enjoy it. And we use the gifts to bless other people. That when we have the joy, we bring more joy to other people. When we have uh, the provision, we help other people. When we have uh, the spiritual gifts, we want, use, want to use our spiritual gifts to bless other people and bring them to Jesus Christ. And whatever we have, we'll bless other people. And then God is very happy with us. Okay, Isaiah 49, 15. Now today I'm talking about how we can be how we can delight in God and enjoy God and delight in serving God because we see so many good things about God everything about God is beautiful Isaiah 49 15 can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb surely they may forget yet I will not forget you so can a woman forget her nursing child no usually not unless the mother has some serious problems and not have compassion on the son of her womb, that the mother will really have compassion on her son or daughter. Surely they may forget, sometimes they may forget, yet I will not forget you, but God will never forget us. So God always, He will not forget us, that means He will always remember us. There is not a second that He will forget us. That means every second He remembers us, and He thinks about us, and He wants to bless us. And the negative examples of people, there are many people who don't realize that God is thinking about them. They think that God is far away. They, because they look at the problems and they don't know how to get strength from God. Now many people don't know how to get strength from God because they don't learn how to pray with the Spirit. With the whole mind and spirit, the, the soul and spirit, with the mind, with the will, with their feelings and with their spirit. That means the whole mind agrees that God is good, agrees that the Bible is good, and the will, I want to follow God, and feelings toward God. God is so wonderful. Everything He created is wonderful. Every work of His is wonderful. Therefore, I really like God. I really want to be with God. I enjoy God. That is the feeling part. Now many people don't have this part. They don't see that God is so wonderful. You know, my wife is a very wonderful woman. She is very nice to me and I'm very nice to her. God has given me a very, very good wife. But compared to God, God is super, super, super perfect. My wife is not perfect. So when we compare even to the best person, I have looked at many women, many wives, and I have not found, you know, hardly have I found a wife who loves her husband so much, who cares about her husband so much. And my wife really cares about me and she's very nice to me. She always wants to do things to bless me and help me. She's always nice to me. I have not found any woman who is so loving toward the husband, so kind. But yet, when we look at some very good person compared to God, God is much more perfect. But many people don't see that. They don't think of God as having compassion on them. They don't appreciate God. So I hope we all appreciate God and then we can become powerful ministers. When we appreciate God when we know God is so wonderful when we know that God is full of goodness and kindness and all kinds of blessings we say God you're so good and then we'll enjoy God but many people are not like that so that's why they don't enjoy God they don't appreciate God and then okay God's nature and his grace God's nature, His inner quality is that He is full of love. He has the ability to remember and He wants to remember every single person. Even the sinners He remembers, even the non-Christians He remembers. He tries to save them but they refused. So God 
remembers every person he has loved and he cares when he when he remembers us, he cares about us. He wants to work in our life. He wants to bless our life. And he works in our life so that, you know, he'll draw us to him so that we have a close relationship with him so that we'll be blessed by God. Okay, now, uh, why do people, why don't people um, appreciate God's remembering them? Because they don't remember God. They don't think about the goodness of God. Now, I spend a lot of time thinking about the goodness of God. When I look at water, I think about how wonderful water is. When I look at my hand, I say, thank God for my hand. That we can do so many things with the hand. And the hands, hands have feelings. We can feel in a person's hand. We can feel... And a person, it, it feels good to be able to feel other person's presence. And I can play the piano, I thank God. I can play the guitar, I thank God for that. I have the brain that can think, I thank God for that. So I look at all the good things of God and I really enjoy that. I really appreciate that. And I know that God remembers me, I really appreciate that. I know that. Right now, God is remembering all of us here. He's remembering you. So I hope it will stick in your mind. God is remembering you. God wants to bless you. So God is always blessing us, always remembering us. But many people don't, they don't, uh, you know, they don't look at God. Therefore, they don't learn to remember God and they don't, Realize that God is remembering them. Okay, how can we appreciate God that He doesn't re forget us, that He remembers us? First, we think of all the blessings of God. We count all the blessings of God. And then we can say, God, I appreciate you. I appreciate your goodness. Everything you've done is so good. I appreciate everything you've done in my life. So we count all the blessings. The blessing of salvation of the Jesus Christ dying on the cross, the blessing of the Holy Spirit moving in our heart, the blessing of the joy of the Lord, the blessing that anytime we pray to God, we can experience Him. So we thank God. Anytime I pray to Him, I can experience Him. So I thank God. Anytime I pray to Him, I can experience God. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that. So, when we thank God for everything, then we'll remember God more because everything we touch, everything we touch came from God. Now, like a pen, you say, well, God did not give this pen to me, but the material all came from God. And also God give people the wisdom to create the pen so that we can write. So it all came from God's creation, the material and the creativity uh, in, our, um, in our mind that we can create things. So we thank God for that. So we, when we thank God for that and we remember how God remembers us. Many times we forgot to pray and then God remem reminds us to pray. How many times we forgot to follow God and God draw us back to Him? How many times we sin and then God draw us to repentance and to draw us back to Him. So God remembers all the time before we remember Him. Before we are faithful, God is faithful all the time. That He continue to bless our life all in all the many ways. So when we appreciate God, then we'll remember all the good things He has done. Then we thank God for every good thing He has done. Then we appreciate Him, then we'll, then we'll remember Him with fondness, that we're happy to remember Him. Like, if a person has a wonderful spouse, he will remember the spouse. If he has a wonderful child, he will remember the child. If he has a wonderful pet, he will remember the pets. And God is more wonderful than any person or any pets. God is so wonderful. So we say, God, I thank you 
and remember all the good things. We count the blessings. Every day we learn to count the blessings. Thank God I can breathe. Thank God I can pray. Thank God I can remember things. I can read the Bible. I can understand the Bible. Thank God for everything. Thank God for everything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we remember all the good things about God and then we, rem we will remember Him more and our mind will be filled with the love of God, will be filled with the comfort of God. And we remember how many times we forgot about Him. He still remembers us. Even when we fail, He still remembers us and continue to draw us to Him. Okay, Zephaniah 3.17 The Lord your God in your midst the Mighty One will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So the Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One, He will save. He is the Mighty One. He will save us, give us eternal life. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will rejoice over us with happiness. Now many people, they think of God, they don't think of happiness. They don't think of God in a happy way. For me, I learned to appreciate God for everything. I appreciate God for creation. I appreciate God for His salvation. I appreciate God for the work of the Holy Spirit in my heart, for the experience of the Holy Spirit, the joy and the love of God, the peace of God. I appreciate all these things. When I appreciate all these things, then I have more joy. I have joy in the Lord. And I know that God rejoices over me. So God is happy over me. 